Well, hello there. Cat here. <laughs> Today, I'm going to be talking about sex. Yes. Um, lately, I've been very sexually frustrated. And I'm a Christian, and it's my choice to not do that. To not masturbate. To not have sex with a partner. Not that I have a partner right now. Or a boyfriend, husband, spouse, significant other. But it is still my choice. So I was looking on YouTube for other people to talk about it and to share um, experiences or the lack thereof. And um, I found this guru guy about the game about Ten Commandments. Well, his Ten Commandments and God's Ten Commandments are totally different. I guess the 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 world made up another Ten Commandments about sex that we're supposed to go by. Well, <laughs> God, <laughs> that's just difficult to talk about. I have known the Lord. Seven years. Well, I knew before that, but I really gave my heart to him, to God, seven years ago. And I had a boyfriend at that time. And like I said in, in previous videos, we fornicated a lot. And ever since then, I've not with anybody else. Ever. It's been a long journey. And a long time after that, I used certain objects to help my pleasure. Very uncomfortable. feel like I'm talking about this with my mother. <laughs> no matter what my age is. And um, the Lord finally said, if you keep on doing that, I'm going to turn my face from you. And you will no longer know me. And God says that you take it serious. And I took it very serious. I was scared for the first time, really scared that I would live my life without the Lord. That I'd possibly die. Well, I would definitely die and definitely get on that judgment seat and possibly not enter into heaven. I took it serious and I'm not saying that everybody has to. They should. Um, but now people in the world are just talking about sex, 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 sex. And men think that they know what women want. First of all, that's a mistake. Some days we don't even know what we want. You know, and we don't want you to come in and save the day. We want for you to empathize. Now I sound like that girl on White Men Can't Jump. We want you to empathize with us. Say, honey, I'm sorry you had a bad day. You don't have to. Correct it. Woo woo woo. None of that. Just say, honey, I'm sorry you had a bad day. Sometimes we need a hug. Sometimes just go away. We don't know. Until we tell you at that exact moment how we're feeling, we don't know. So guys cannot possibly understand what in the heck women want. Also, the problem is, is that you're a young boy, maybe 18 years old, and you've dated a couple girls, and you think that you know by dating those two girls what women want. Well, a 19-year-old girl and a 38-year-old girl, such as myself, woman, such as myself, are going to want different things. So you can't base what women want from an 18-year-old across the gamut of ages. So, there's another thing. Um, I don't know when sex became a game. Um, I don't know when it became... People keep on talking about the game and the rules and the this and the that. And, and what I said to them is guys take women home to marry them and they take hoes home to fuck them. And I'm going to be real, and I'm going to swear, and I'm probably going to repent a lot later. But that's the truth. You don't take a hoe home to mama. You don't take a hoe home to sunny dinner. You just don't. 
You don't. And if women are out there and they're willing to fuck you, that's all good with them. Okay. But I think the women have seriously misconstrued some values or morals in, across the past 20 years here. Because I grew up and it was not even talked about. You don't talk about it. You don't ask about it. You don't... You don't look at it. They're just... It's, it's gone. Nothing... You don't even know what it is. And now it's little kids you know are, are picking up more words and parents are now discussing adult things in front of the children that should not hear them so that's another issue um but when sex became a game i don't understand it's confusing to me i mean i had my time i i sold my oats a lot and the only thing is I don't understand how you bang this one and you bang that one and you bang that one and you bang that one and you go home and everything's okay I mean if I did that I feel like like a hoe like a dirty skanky no nothing raggedy hoe and I don't understand more men don't understand that that first of all is dangerous if you don't have protection Number one, not even talking about getting her knocked up. Talk about AIDS. Talk about STDs. Talk about just the, the general feeling of how you feel. The thing is, men all get together and they talk about, it, like, oh yeah, baby, I banged that and smacked that last night and all that. <laughs> just, I can't believe I'm talking like this. But when you go home, do you, are you really still hooting and hollering? You know, are you just like, wow, and you're just looking at tomorrow's lineup. I just don't understand when it was a game and women don't want that. Women want to be cared for. Okay, maybe you don't have to roll out the red carpet. Maybe you don't have to sit there and do everything for her, you know, but all we've ever wanted is to know that we're special. And we're beautiful. No matter if we look like a damn freaking dog, we're still beautiful in your eyes. And I just, ugh, so frustrating. How sex used to be for married people, and now it's just for everybody. Everybody can have it. I don't get it. So. Men have misconstrued a lot of things, a lot of signs, you know, and I saw that movie, is it Valentine's Day? And they said it's always a friend of a friend. And that's true, you don't ever say, oh, well, you know, my my girlfriend or, or I, you know, found somebody and we got married and we lived happily ever after. No, marriage is a commitment. You know, it's not just, oh, I'm marrying this girl so I can sleep with her every day. I just don't understand. It's just how sex can be so... It used to be the commitment behind the act. Now it's the act behind the lies of a commitment. That was God right there, I have to say. That was just, that was really, that was God right there. Because I'm, I'm not that smart. Truthfully. And, um. Guys lie. To get it. Women lie to get it. And even when you do get it and you're in a relationship, then you lie with the other person. Because now you're not only getting him, but you're getting another guy and another guy and another guy. And somewhere it became, you know, it's okay to just screw your boyfriend. It's okay to screw the guy you're with, screw the girl you're with, to now, let's just have a big freaking swingers party and everybody's fucking everybody. What? What? I mean, I used to watch the, the, the what is it, when I was in the world, the, um, 
the HBO documentaries, Taxi Cab Confessions and Hookers in Atlantic City and on the other one where people just get on boats and they just fuck everything they see in sight. I just don't understand. How do you live with yourself like that? How does somebody live with themselves and, and to sit there and take advice from, from a kid who doesn't even know what he's talking about and, and to, you know, try to put that to a relationship? First off, you've got to be real. You've got to be honest. Because if you're not honest, it's not going to work. If you just want to screw people, go ahead you think that's going to get you somewhere in life, go ahead. If you think that's going to get you to the top of the ladder, fuck away. Really. Just fuck away. I just don't... Where's the morals? Where's the thought inside that says, Oh my gosh. I just made like a really big mistake. The thing is, people are all about flesh, are all about lust of the eye and the smell and this, and people spend so much money on on food for aphrodisiacs to get somebody in bed when I mean just don't my mom said once to me that you get a really great husband. That is all that you want. But if he's great in bed, then that's a bonus. And I know people might say, okay, that's weird. But it's the truth. It's, it's the marriage that you value, not the sex. Is it really just about the penis and the balls? Or just about the woman's hole? I mean, is, that's, is that what life is really all about? Just kill everybody then, like if right now. If life was all about the game and the chase and the costumes and the toys and the people and just... Where the hell did we get so far away? And I don't blame people for being sexually frustrated. You know, you got little bitty girls walking in booty shorts now. You know, like it's it's okay now to just wear what, whatever you want to wear. I mean, there's no, no mom at home saying, you can't wear that. There's no dad saying, excuse me, no daughter of mine is going to walk out of the house like that. There's no mom saying, pull your pants up, boy. You know, people wearing pants all the way down to the crack of their ass, let their underwear show. Where's the respect for ourselves? The respect for other people saying, I'm not going to let somebody see me with the crack of my ass showing. It's beyond me. The world, the lust of the flesh is beyond me. Everything is, and if you think about it, you truly think about it, everything you see, smell, hear, is instant gratification. I want, I want, me, 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 me. What about waiting? Even if you did, like like me, even if you did give up your virginity at a younger age, and then you come to the Lord and you realize what that was worth, and you feel bad about it, but then you can't go back. So now you do treasure every single day that you still hold on to it your husband every day that you hold on to it for somebody special not just whoever comes along people are so desperate for love they give everything away the most precious things away because they think that if they give themselves away and then they're gonna be loved and it's a game the thing that you don't realize is God's love God's love is more important than what you think that you're going to get from some man or some woman. And yes, marriage is special and it's treasured and it's beautiful. I just... When, when did we get so 
sees the terminology loose with our choices in life, with ourselves. We sit there and we see some other lady going out and putting on hoochie mama shorts and putting on a low top for, for her boobs to be just showing. And when did we say, I have to be better than that so I can get what she wants? When did we say, I want what she wants? Coveting, it's all about coveting. It's all about wanting what she has, her look, her clothes, what she actually has, her boyfriend, her car, her house, or his. The thing is, maybe this is just my, my type. I think no man looks finer than in a three-piece suit, a uniform, and it's not only just the clothes, it's the confidence that they carry within themselves. It's the confidence, it's the security, it is the respect that they are upholding in themselves and that standard that they are upholding in themselves. And they will say, I'm not going out like that. I'm not going down like that. This woman thinks she can approach me just like that and just say, okay, baby, I want you. And that's just, okay, no. I think my neighbor's listening to me right now, but I mean, that's kind of good. I mean, if anything's going to be getting through, you know, maybe people might call me a prude. You know, I haven't had sex in a long time. Okay, that's the truth. I haven't had sex in a really long time. Seven years, that's a long time. But you know what? It's my choice. I, I didn't, the thing is, I didn't value myself before. I did not value what I had and a friend a long time ago says just because you're a woman and just because you got what you got it's a prize any man is gonna try to get it and I might not be physically beautiful audacious glamorous gorgeous hot whatever you want to call me. but I know my values I know who my God is and I know who I serve and I did give it away before I met God and I did meet a lot of people and I was looking for love in all the wrong places and I did things with a married man that I didn't know he was married and but that is also on his shoulders because that was his lie not mine but I didn't know my value. And people don't know their value. They don't know their worth. And some days I even say to myself, Lord, why do you love me? I don't feel like I'm, I'm worth your love. And that is the whole basis of this video because none of us, not one of us feel we're worth loving. We're worth being treasured, pampered, catered to. So we just give it up to any person we see because we think that might be a little bit, a little attention might be better than nothing. But the self-worth you have inside yourself is a whole lot better than that little attention that you get from that man or that woman. So, Not saying that it's not difficult to abstain, that it's damn, damn difficult sometimes. And sometimes you just have to take it minute by minute. Sometimes day by day. Sometimes just, you know, I don't think because I've abstained so long that it's so easy for me, that it's so easy to just not think about it. The only thing is, and I have to say this before I go, I used to look at porn a lot. I used to watch porn. I used to get off on porn. Yes, I did. Not proud of it, but I did. And I used to get off on a lot of things, literally. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't want to be serious. <laughs> okay, okay. 
I don't want to be that person again. That, that's an old person. I'm Corinthians 2. Corinthians 2, I think it's either 2.17 or 5.17. I am a new creature in Christ. All things have passed away, and I have become new. So I'm not a new creature in Christ. That, nope, that, that Satan could not, nope, I bind that, I bind that. Okay, having a little difficulty. But the thing is, I used to have a lot of toys. I used to go and I used to buy a lot of toys. And I bought just a whole lot of stuff. And I used to spend buku on toys. And about a year ago, there's a site where a lot of really hot looking men. Um, you can see everything. Everything. And it's an escort site. But I like the pictures. I didn't go there for an escort. I just like the pictures. Liked. And a year ago, I went on there. After being celibate for seven years. After fighting the masturbation. And I went on there to turn myself on. And it actually, I looked at all the naked guys. I'm just sitting there looking at them looking at him and looking at him and I'm like wow I feel like my brain just kind of woke up I'm like what's exciting about that that's just flesh just flesh and when you think about it and you actually see it with your own eyes and maybe guys are different because I know that they think about sex like every 22.2 seconds. Flesh is pretty gross. I mean, like, if you think about the whole, the fantasy in the whole, then, then maybe that is awesome to think about. You know, and I can't lie. But to actual think of flesh, a man's balls... I'm sorry, but that is not sexy. <laughs> a woman that has been very loose with herself, her, her vagina. That is not sexy. That is not sexy. That is gross. That is din dingy. That is, ugh. Really think about it. You know? Just flesh. But I mean, anyway, I'm 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 coming to a um, a point which is turn me off. After all that time being in the world, and then after all that time being celibate and fighting that, and fighting sexual frustration and fighting sexual feelings and all that stuff. That day I looked at those, and yes, the downfall was that I looked at them. That was the sin, is that I looked at them. But the awesome part was that I did not get turned on. I just said, wow, that is just flesh. I finally got to the part in my brain and my body and everything that, that is within me. And I said, that is just flesh. I don't want that. Would I rather have a husband that treats me right, doesn't beat me, doesn't abuse me, doesn't verbally abuse me, doesn't hit me, doesn't treat me like crap. I would rather have a husband that might not be looking so hot, so sexually, physically hot, but treats me like a princess that I am, than to see a really, really hot naked man on a bed. There's no comparison. I'd rather have the husband that might not be looking so great that treats me like the queen that I am. And that's what you have to come to, is that what do you really want? No pun intended there. What do you really want? Do you just want a hot man on bed? Or do you want somebody that's going to treat you right? And Lord willing, after you get married, maybe you can have both. But you cannot have the sex before the commitment, before the respect, before the marriage. The marriage comes first, and that's why the unity of marriage 
man and woman was created by God because you want that respect first. You want the man to think of you first before he thinks of himself. You want the man to to love you first before he thinks of his penis. And that's what it's all about. You have the union of marriage before you have the union of sex. So there you go. I don't know what it's all about. I just look on a man. <laughs> yet. Yet. He is on his way. He is on his way. Thank you, Jesus. I I thank you. And and it's it's as embarrassing it is as it is to, to talk about this and to share my experience, Lord. To share who I was in, in that world. And to have possibly have my neighbors be listening to me right now. It's embarrassing, Lord God, but you know what? I'd, I'd rather sit here with that somewhat embarrassment than to be sitting here empty. Empty in myself, empty in my spouse, empty in my life. And yes, there's times that I feel very, very lonely and very, very alone. And I thank you for that love. The embrace that you give me any time that I want it, Lord God, because I am your daughter. And you know that I am fighting. And some days digging my nails in. To be this pure woman of God. And I'm kindly and patiently waiting for my husband. Then to be a woman of flesh who had the values nothing in herself but might have physically everything she wants. Again, I praise you in the good times. I praise you in the bad times. I thank you for this video. I pray that it can shed some light on some people, Lord God, that really need this. Please, Lord God, I pray for you to get this out there. And just get it out there. And I'm praying also not because I feel it in my heart because I pray, I'm, I'm praying because I want these people to know that I'm serious, that it's just not a ha 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 video. I want you more to know that I'm serious. And I know that when I pray and I close my eyes and I concentrate on you, Lord God, that you know that this is a desire of my heart is to get this out there for people to see it. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you for being my God. Thank you for putting up with me. Every day of my life, you put up with me. Not to say that I'm not worthy, but you put up with me every single day. You put up with my insecurities, with everything that I have within me. That's good, that's bad, that's ugly, that's beautiful. You put up with it. Because you love me so much and I am worth your love. Whether some days I want to realize it or not. Like earlier today and yesterday. I am worth your love. And that is more than any flesh ever in the world. Thank you God. Thank you. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> I've been struggling a lot recently with rejection. A lot of people have rejected me lately, which is a whole new video. So, God is good, isn't he? God is just, God is so good. God takes this, this, this heathen, this, this humanistic, fleshly, instant gratification, me, me, me person. From dirty, ugly sinner to beautiful woman of God. So if you see this in this, this emotionally and mentally touches your heart, 
think it's time for prayer. <laughs> Thank you for watching. It's as, as difficult as it was for me to talk about. <sighs> Love yourselves. I know it's hard. I'm still working on it. Love yourself. Love God. Allow God to love you. Allow God to heal that hurt within your heart. Nobody's walking around here that doesn't have hurt. Nobody's walking around here that, that doesn't have baggage. Nobody's walking around that that hasn't been totally, totally hurt and betrayed in their life and abused. You are worth God's love. Your worth is embrace. So if you really need love right now and you don't feel God's love or you don't think he's there, just ask him. For the true heart. It doesn't have to be beautiful. Kind of snot running down your face. Say, Lord, I need you to hold me. Go lay down on your bed. Go lay down on your couch, wherever, you, wherever you're at. And just don't worry about if you feel it or not. Just go lay down and, and just expect it. Just expect his love. But God's going to love you and embrace you the way he's going to embrace you. You can't expect him to embrace you like a physical human being. Because that's most of the time not the way it happens. God bless you. And you will see more of these. Not very... Not very soon, but you'll see more. God bless you. Thank you for watching. If you could please comment, follow, like, subscribe, I would very much appreciate it. And if you could please share this, if you see this, to get it out. People need to see it. That the ones like us that do hold on to their purity, even though they might have lost it before, you can still regain it again in Christ. They need to see it. Thank you. Amen.